What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. One thing I don't see covered very often on prepper channels. I saw a few videos, but very, very few videos about empty hand self-defense. You know, it's best to have a gun, it's best to have a knife, it's best to have a club, it's best to have something. But sometimes all you sometimes all you might have is your bare hands. That's hope not, but sometimes it happens. And if that's the case, you need to know how to defend yourself. Now you could go spend thousands of dollars at a martial arts dojo learning traditional martial arts. Go to mixed martial arts gym and pay money, practice, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, you can learn a whole lot about basic striking, which is actually the most effective because traditional martial arts, for example, is it, is it the best thing for a self-defense situation in most cases? You know, you have the traditional blocks, you get the traditional punches, and while it looks good, it's good training, good exercise, and it can work to a limited extent in a self-defense situation, it's really not the best thing. The best thing is to learn quick, easy, down and dirty, techniques to end the fight really quickly. Another thing a lot of people get into is jujitsu. And there's nothing wrong with jujitsu at all. It's good for it's good for limited self-defense, especially if you're facing just one opponent. But if you're in an actual street self-defense situation, the worst thing you want to the last thing you want to be doing is getting into a grappling match. Because Say there's more than one person. You're grappling this guy, you got him on the ground, and you're trying to get him in a choke hold. You're trying to get a, a neck crank or an arm bar. One of his friends over here can just kick you in the head four or five times and you're done. You know, or you start grappling and this guy could have a knife. So grappling is it the best thing for street self-defense. You need to learn some grappling, but it is grappling, jujitsu, judo, like I said, has limited usefulness in a self-defense situation. But other, you need to avoid grappling if possible, in my opinion. You know, start grappling in a cage match, say the UFC. Grappling is great because your opponent isn't allowed to bite. Your opponent isn't allowed to eye gouge. Your opponent isn't allowed to grab you by the throat and rip your throat out. You know, there's things that you're not allowed to do in a UFC match that you are, that, you, that people will do in a street fight. So it's best to keep your self-defense techniques simple, basic, dirty, but effective. One of the most important things in a self-defense situation is to strike first. If you see it's going to come to a confrontation, a physical confrontation, and you have no way of getting away from the situation, walking away from the situation, then you want to be the one to strike first. You don't want to wait for someone to strike you because that will be reactive. And to be reactive, you have to be so much more alert, so much quicker because you don't know exactly when they're going to strike. You have to wait to see when they're going to strike. And most likely, you might miss the kill, you might turn your head, you might look off, you might just be really quick, pow, and you're on the ground. You want to strike first, if at all possible. And we'll talk about a few strikes here right now, guys. One of the first strikes, and one of the best strikes that I like to use in a street situation is a palm strike. I don't really, your fist can be used, of course, it's been used effectively for forever, you know, but you can break your fist pretty easily. If you hit the bones of the skull and your fist can break and cause permanent damage to your hands, and it's really not the most effective technique to use. Because say, for example, a hook, you know, you come in, there's throw a hook, and you gotta come in, throw that hook, and it's easy to break your fist that way on someone's bones. Whereas if you throw uh, a palm strike, you want to strike with the palm strike, you're not striking with the fingers. You're striking with the back part of your hand right here, the hard part of the hand, okay? 
the best place to hit with the palm strike. Uh, there's a couple best places to hit, and I'll cover all those here in a sec. Right through here at the jaw line, it's an excellent knockout point because you want to get a knockout with the first hit if possible, and shaking the brain is the best way to do that. You want to shake that brain to cause that shot, to cause, a, cause that attacker to go down instantly. Hopefully, that's the best case scenario. But your hand right here is a striking area, and you come around, you bring this hand up here to protect your face on this side in case he throws a punch over here. You know, you bring it around, your hand comes up at the same time. And your hand comes up, and this hand comes around, and hit right here in the jawline for the knockout. You know, your hand comes through, you don't want to just take and uh, hit and pull it away. Your goal is to hit and bring your hand all the way through his head and take his head completely off. It's not going to happen, but that should be the goal in your mind. You don't want to, you don't want to pull your strike. You want to get the most power and most effectiveness from that strike. You can also a palm strike under the chin. It's extremely, extremely effective because you get that hit under the chin, it's quick, and your opponent it comes under the it comes under the line of vision usually. Up and under the chin. And it will snap the head back, cause damage to the back of the head, back to the spine, cause damage to the chin, neck area, can cause your opponent to bite their tongue, knock their teeth out, and it causes the brain to be shocked and cause a knockout. So again, bring this hand up beside the head to protect against a strike. This hand comes up under the chin. So you're arguing and your toe is going to turn physical because he keeps he's coming closer right as he's coming closer you also have his momentum coming towards you for the strike so you're actually using his his momentum of his body weight as he's coming forward to actually to go against your strike which will cause more damage to him but anytime that someone is within striking distance you should try to strike first because if they're in striking distance they are a threat Striking this, it's arm's length or where they can kick. Most people won't kick, most people can't kick, but some people can, so if they come in within four or five feet, especially in arm's length, then they're in striking distance, and you should try to always get the first strike. So the first two strikes that I think are most effective, like I said, palm strike right through here on the side of the jawline, up palm strike, under the chin. This is really effective if you're up close because there's the guy's looking at you, and your hands are usually down here, and you come up really quickly, bring that hand up under that chin, and snap the head back full force. And again, you want to have in your mind that you're trying to take your head and put it off. You don't want to just bring it up and snap. You want to bring it up and go all the way through, all the way through the opponent's head. You want to drive that head off the torso up into space. It should be what your thought process is to get the maximum amount of strength in that strike. Another strike is the cupped hand strike to the ears. This is really good, especially if you're someone's trying to choke you out or something like that, or get you up by the shirt collar or something. Take both hands, cut both hands, and both hands come up one side of the head to the ears, okay? Pow. Both sides of the head. I mean both sides both sides of the head on both ears. You want to cut those ears. And you also got them here. And you grab the head here. You have a hold of the head. You grab the head and you can come in with a good head butt right across the nose. You can come in with knee strikes to the torso. You've got all kinds of options because you've got to hold them right here by their head. You can also, once you slap and you have them by the head, you can also uh, take your thumbs and put it into the eyes, and push into the eye sockets, and try to push those eyes completely back to the back of the head. Again, guys, this is self-defense. It is not meant to be pretty. It's not meant to be like you see in the movies. It's meant to be actual down and dirty self-defense to get the fight stopped as quickly as possible. Okay, guys, another strike is very effective in a street fight, self-defense, and very effective for paper hand-to-hand -hand combat is the knife hand strike. You strike at this point here, again, not the fingers, back here at the back of your hand and even up here at the wrist. But mainly right through here is a striking area. You hold your hand at a good solid angle. You want to bring your, you can bring your, have your thumb up. Some people does it that way. Some brings their thumb down. 
it doesn't really matter. This way make your hand a little bit more rigid than this way, but either will work fine. Uh, knife hand strike. Your target area can be anywhere on the body, of course, but your main target area with a knife hand strike will be the jugular vein through here on the neck or the throat. The top striking area is for a knife hand strike. For example, a knife hand strike to the throat, you are here, you're, I don't want to fight, I don't want to do this, let's just talk about this, your hand comes straight around into the throat, into the jugular vein, as hard as you can hit. And again, you bring your hand up to protect your face on this side, and your goal again is to completely bring your hand all the way through his body, slice all the way through. That should be your mindset. You don't want to pull your strike. You want to get maximum effectiveness with all your power. And again, your body, you get a lot of power from your body when your body twists a throw strike. Your body, your hips, and your legs, your, that's where most of your power comes from in a strike is your waist area and your hips and your body weight behind your strike. If you're just throwing a hand strike, it's not near as powerful as throwing the whole body behind it, okay? You want to, like I said, bring that hand all the way through in your imagination. Your goal is to take his head and take off his shoulders, okay? The second place, the second best place for a knife hand strike is the Adam's apple right here. Say, for example, you are standing like so. He's coming, bring your hand in, strike to the Adam's apple. The guys, the ultimate goal is to end the fight with one strike, your first strike to end the fight. It doesn't always work that way, so you need to be prepared to uh, follow up with more strikes. You keep striking until the opponent goes down. You don't want to just come in, say, with a palm strike to the head and just sit back and see what happens. You want to come in and hopefully it'll fall right down, but you want to be sure to, as soon as you throw this, to come in with something else. So this hand here is cocked back, so you can throw, say, a strike to the bridge of the nose or a strike under the throat, something like that, you know. You want to keep it, keep it going until the until he's down. Now, like the ear strike, both sides, bring it the head, butt, knees, elbows. You keep it going until the fight is ended. You don't want to just strike one strike and look back and say, well, that didn't work. <laughs> you want to keep striking until they go down because it might be really tough and he might be on drugs or something like that and have more ability to stay on his feet and more ability to do you harm. So keep striking until He's down and he's not moving. Again, this is a legal advice. This is self-defense advice. Advice. Uh, another strike is a hammer fist strike. This is you strike with this part of the hand right here, and one of the best targets for that is the bridge of the nose right here. Again, this hand comes up, protect your head. Bridge of the nose strike like you're here. You know, just bring them out, bridge of the nose. Another hand comes through to a strike here, to the side of the head. Pop, 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 I keep it going, you know. But the hammer fist strike, the bridge of the nose, right through here, come down with full power. Hammer fist strike to the collarbone. You can actually break the collarbone. If the collarbone is broken, then your arm, the opponent's arm, will be pretty much useless from that point on. You have other things on his mind besides attacking you. So hit to the collarbone, to the hammer fist strike. Another thing you can do with the hammer fist is come in to the side of the head with the hammer fist strike, like a back fist strike. But instead of using your knuckles to strike using your hand, coming through the hammer fist strike to the head, the jaw that brain around to the jaw, to the head, to the temple. Guys, there are lots of ways to use hammer fist strikes. They're very powerful. They're easy to learn and the risk of breaking your hand is a whole lot lower than it is trying to use your knuckles. You know, strike right here, and you've got a lot more power. Also, especially coming down with strikes like a hammer, uh, you want to, again, try to drive your hand all the way through his body. Use your hips, use your legs to gain more power and more momentum. And still yet, you want to use, and again, you want to use follow-up strikes. You know, hammer fist, Hands back here already cocked up, ready to go. Under the chin, this hand here comes around the side of the head. You can slap the ears. You can 
knee, you can elbow, just keep it going and practice. A bob like this is excellent for practice because he has all the extremities of a human opponent. Okay guys, another thing that is really effective in a street fight that takes a little more practice is elbow strikes. And of course, you gotta be in close for elbow strikes. Your elbow is a very hard, pointy object on your body and it can do a lot of damage if it's thrown right. Again, this is a good target area. The neck can be a good target area. The eye socket can be a good target area. Uh, under the chin can be a good target area depending on the location where you're standing, how you throw the strike. But to throw an elbow strike, you want to, again, your body twist as your body comes around. All your strength comes from your core and from your legs. Elbow strike, come in to the side of the head or the eye, and you can do it. Come through, and again, you want to bring your body. Your hand goes up to protect your face and sideways. And you come around with full force, you gotta be in close. Usually you're in a grappling situation, and you're wrestling around, and you come up with elbows. You knock your opponent down, or knock your opponent out, hopefully. You know what pretty effective double strikes is. So here in the head, to the neck. Uh, if you're doing under, under the chin, you can be here, and your elbow can come up under, under your opponent's chin. It takes practice. These are a little more advanced techniques that elbow strikes are, but they can be very effective in a street fight. Under the chin, across. You can also come around the elbow, the punch behind. You know, you can come around different ways to throw the elbow strike. Just practice and practice, and will you practice right off your way. But the thing to keep in mind is the way your body moves to throw the elbow. You want to be able to chamber it up quickly, and your body comes around to give you power and strength and speed to throw the elbow strike. And guys, another strike that's very effective in a street fight is knee strikes. You want to, again, be in close. You can't be out like this, far away from throwing a knee strike. You want to be in close to throwing a knee strike. And again, most likely you'll be in a grappling type situation where he's trying to get a hold of you and you're trying to get a hold of him to gain the edge on the feet and the grappling. <clears throat> but knee strikes, most like I said, mostly to the ground area and to the lower abdomen area. Uh, you're here grappling and your knee can come in and into the ground. I can't see that, can you guys? Let's see. Put the camera down a little further as you can see in these strike. Hopefully. All right, that's a little better for knee strike. Uh, you're in a grappling situation. You're wrestling around. Your knee can come up into the ground area, hitting the stomach here so you can see. But pretend that's his ground area. And you know, your knee comes back to get more power all the way up to your body. More more upper thrust, the better. You want to drive his nuts up into his throat if possible, if it's a male. <laughs> it's more effective on a male. But uh, bring the knee up as hard as you can. You can pull the head down at the same time. It keeps him from getting away and moving out of the way. And your knee strike can come into the stomach and come straight up to the solar plex, lower stomach, to the ground area, come around to the side, to the side area. And it's very effective, very quick, but again, it's if you're in a grappling type situation mostly. You're not gonna be out, you're not gonna be out at any distance and try to throw a knee strike. It's not very effective. You want to be in close. Okay guys, another thing that is really effective in a street fight is a rear naked choke. It takes a little practice to do this, but keep in mind that this choke is designed to cut the blood supply off from the brain by compressing the chocolate veins on each side, the arteries on each side, to close the blood supply from the brain, causing the opponent to pass out. If, after the opponent passes out, you keep the pressure on, you can actually cause your opponent to die. So it is, would be at that point, could be considered murder because the opponent, your attacker was already out and you kept holding the choke until your attacker passed away. So, that'd be considered murder. But again, this isn't a video about legal self-defense advice. So don't take it as that. This is a video about self-defense techniques. So, what you do is up to you. 
Depends on the situation, depends on how the world is at that time, depends on what's going on, guys. I'm not giving you any legal advice at all, but you can kill someone using a rear naked choke. It's been done before. The police have done it to uh, people a bunch of times over the years, here recently also. But anyway, rear naked choke. You have to be behind the person, of course. You can get that choke if, uh, say, your attacker is trying to attack you. You can block the arms, bring your hand around and come around the head. Get around and see, get over here, you can see me a little better. All right. Okay, you can see it better right there, a little better. All right, guys. Rear naked choke, your arm comes around, their throat is at the bend of your elbow right here, the inside of your elbow. Your hand comes around, your throat, your arm comes around the throat to compress here and over here, the arteries in the throat, okay? This hand here goes into your arm for more leverage. This hand comes behind the head, and you just squeeze down until they stop moving. That's all there is to it. Very simple, pretty easy. You want to put your chin on your hand to get more leverage and more power. You squeeze everything you have, your shoulders, your arms, everything. This hand here keeps the head you just tighten down until you stop moving. But anyway, guys, hope you found the video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe for notifications on me. I'll notify you time to upload a new video. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'm going to do more. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully.